Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, yard, yard sale. sale. The yard sale. Are there good deals at your yard sales? Mesdames et messieurs, the greatest festival of our contemporary society, the Olympic Games, is about to begin. This is going to be close. Oh! Hello and welcome to Olympic Fever. I am your host, Jill Jarris, joined as always by my lovely co-host, Allison Brown. Hello, Allison. Hello, Jill. How are you? I am much calmer today. Oh, I yes. Yes, it is yes, calm. Yes, I and, have. And I would say I, I had read that an overwhelming number of Russian athletes still would like to compete in the Olympics. So, And I'm very exciting. relieved and calm and I've worked it all out. I've done my yoga, so I'll be better today. <laughs> we're getting closer and closer so i'm feeling more and more olympic with every moment yes. that goes on you know <clears throat> uh yesterday i was curling and we have one of the canadian feeds up in the house and canada was having the roar of the rings tournament sponsored by tim hortons um <laughs> <laughs> or in our house we call them timmy ho-hos <laughs> But they uh, announced their the, the winners got onto the Canadian team, the Olympic team, and okay. it was so cool. All I could see while I was trying to pay attention to my own curling game was um, when they announced everybody for the teams. They gave them their jackets, their Canadian jacket. Oh, and they are so oh. cool looking red jackets with this huge white maple leaf that kind of starts at the the right hip and goes all the way across their chest. It's so cool. I oh. and of course they were teary a little bit and oh so exciting. I'm so excited for for them to make the, the Olympics. What a dream. I know. I definitely would have cried. <laughs> Could, be honest, I couldn't though. cry. I was in an ice house. Tears would have frozen <laughs> to my face. Give me it was the, humi- the lack of humidity in the ice house. <laughs> I'm not crying. No, it's just this lack of humidity makes my tears water. It makes my eyes water. (laughs) But today on the show, we are talking more freestyle skiing. We are uh, going back to some of our interviews that we did at the Team USA Winterfest, sponsored by Hershey. And (laughs) I should really stop saying these sponsor names until they actually give us some money to say this. Yeah, dude. <clears throat> okay. They just mention them. We gotta. We get, They gotta pay for that honor. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll we'll work on that. We are going back to the world of freestyle skiing, and today we are talking to slope style skier, and um, she does slope style and ski half pipe, and that's Devin Logan, who was a silver medalist in Sochi, which was the first games that this event, these events were contested. And um, along with Devin, you'll hear in the background, we, uh, Morgan Schild was also with her. After we talked to Devin, we talked to Bradley Wilson, who is a moguls skier, and he competed in Sochi and is hoping to go to uh, Pyeongchang. So let's take a listen to what Devin has to say to educate us about slope style skiing. One of the things we like to do on our show is educate the listeners a little bit better about the different sports. So, yeah. like, what kind of things should people look for that they might not, the TV guys might not tell us about? Um, so, I compete in ski half pipe and ski slope style, and okay. that's new to the Olympics. Uh, Sochi was our first debut. Right. Um, and in our sport, it's hard. It's a judge sport. So, where a lot of time sports, like, you clearly know who wins. Right. Um, and I think the hardest thing about ours is it's not described to the audience watching at home what they're basically judging us on. You know, they just kind of, there's a panel of six judges and then a zero to 100 score is given. And I think people are just like, wait, how did they get that score? And it's not broken down for them where the judges are judging each of us on the difficulty of our run. Are we spinning both left and right ways, going forwards and switch, uh, the amplitude of our jumps, you know, you kind of want to make the jump maybe go a little bit farther than 
what we call knuckling and not making the jump and exploding and yard sale and all that. And then yard, like wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yard, the yard sale. sale. The yard sale. Are there where, good deals at your yard sales? <laughs> no, usually not. It's it's a rough one. Uh, yard sales when you fall and kind of lose pretty much all your equipment, you know, skis are everywhere, poles, <laughs> like, may have lost a glove and fallen off or something like okay, that. And, and knuckling? Knuckling. Um, so on a tabletop jump, you have... Okay, back up a second. <laughs> so on the... Well, it's... No, no, because no, yeah. are we talking the... Um, the the, the flat. It's, it's, it's like yeah. a so, jump that's so kind of there's flat. The, the takeoff of the jump, like the ramp. Yeah. Yes. And then you have a, a flat part that you have to yes. clear that gap, and then a downward sloping yes. landing. Okay. So okay. Okay. where the flat tabletop to the like the, the downward edge. slope, that yes. edge, that's called the knuckle of the jump. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. So, especially what? at the speed and height of the jumps, it's usually a 65 foot jump. We're taking it 70 feet, and the speed of I don't know what how fast we go into it, but that's a lot of g forces when you hit. So. Okay. And what does your mother think of all of this? Does she worry about you? Um, she does, but uh, <laughs> you know, for me, I'm the youngest of five, and my brothers are professional skiers as well. So I think. I think she's pretty much used to it by now. She's seen some crashes, but uh, yeah, when, during Sochi, she she got scared. She couldn't watch my run. She turned away, and then once I was at the bottom of the course, she she was looking up for the score. So she gets a little nervous. Do they have in your sport? You know, like ice skating is infamous for the Russian judges. Do you have judges like that? In um, no. Our panel of judges. Um, I mean, they're all made up of from different countries, which is good, but we have the same panel that we usually compete in all year oh, round, oh, okay. so we're starting to really get like a knack for kind of what they're looking out for, and they're trying to be on the same page because no contest is the same, and like it's a judge sport, so you know, people make mistakes, and during the time of it and everything, it's, it can be overwhelming, so. Um, how was the course in Sochi? It was like Olympic. I mean, obviously Olympic. But so, like, like how, how was it quality wise for you? Quality wise, it was one of the toughest courses I've ever skied. Um, just the makeup of how the jumps were, they were kind of a different style of jumps that I wasn't really used to. So, having five days to train on the course was definitely helpful. Um, but yeah, you just have to adapt, and that's what's cool about. Uh, slope style skiing is that no course is the same so every time we show up it's a different course made up of different types of jumps and different handrails that we slide and giving us options and that's you can pick your own line and make the run as unique to your style as you want and I think that's what's awesome and that's what stands out in the judges eyes because you have you know two runs and 20 competitors and they kind of kind of starts getting repetitive looking the same and if you can do something that's different and stand out that's usually the best call what, what move do you have in your back pocket sorry what move do you have in your back pocket that you just like to oh i gotta throw this in um you know we have our stock tricks that we do but um definitely the big thing in us, in our, in my sport, is style, like grabbing our skis and okay. mixing different things up. And so I think just if you can get, grab your skis and look, make it look as easy as possible, then it's golden. So Sochi, yes. How was your experience in terms of being there, living there? It was good. Um, I actually didn't spend as much time there as I thought I would. I my event was the second day. Um, and I ended up taking home the silver medal. And so I kind of cut my time short in Russia to come back here to capitalize on media and stuff. So I was over here when, um, you know, more different events were still competing. So um, I would have liked to gone to see kind of like more events in, in person in real life. But I also won my medal a week before my 21st birthday so I kind of wanted to spend it over here stateside and I'm originally from Long Island so my dad's here and just celebrated my 21st in New York so you can't really beat that it's a little bit better with your friends and family than in Russia. Now where is the medal? I was just going to ask. Oh, uh, <laughs> That's why we work together too. The, uh, the medal's at home right now. Um, I came from a training camp in Europe so I was over in Europe for the last four weeks, so I didn't really 
feel comfortable carrying a medal over there, but right now it's uh, sitting in my bedroom, so. What, what, what kind of stuff do they do at training camp? Is it like invite only? or? Um, so, part of the U.S. ski team, um, they just, they let us, they schedule camps for us. Um, we were in Sasve, Switzerland, and then Stubai, Austria. And um, it's just kind of up to us. If we want to attend, we can. If we kind of want to do our own thing, that's okay too. Um, so it's very, it's nice to kind of, they just want us to be the best gear and whatever we need, they are fine with that. So if like you feel like you need some downtime, they're not gonna push you into keep skiing. Like they know every individual is different and if what works for me might not work for my teammates. So, but I mean, I'm gonna take them up on going and traveling overseas and seeing these cool places. So why wouldn't someone attend a trip, a camp like that, you know? Right, right. So yeah, when is your trial? When are um, trials? So they start in early December. We have five uh, five competitions we have to compete in uh, to make the criteria. So our team will be named uh, like the middle to the end of January, right before we go. Oh, really? So wait, so you have your event and then you got to wait? So we have five events between oh, oh, uh, gotta, December uh, okay, so that we have to qualify in. Okay. So. so if you have one bad day, it's not going to kill you. Yeah, and that's what's awesome. You know, you... Everyone has their good and bad days, and it's nice to have options to, you know, bounce back and recover from, you know, possibly an event that you didn't ski your best in. Technically, have things changed or heightened? Like, how is the skill level up since Sochi? Oh, it's it's the progression of uh, free skiing it has been tremendous over the years. Like, there generations are getting younger and younger and braver and braver. Sure, and you're just, like, what, 24 yeah, now? 24 now, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but, <laughs> but I compete, I compete I against 15-year-olds, you. you know? You do. And, and, but it's, it's cool because it still lights that fire and really keeps pushing me to, you know, learn new tricks and really try to get my skills better and, you know, kind of show those youngins that I still got it, that I'm not ready to go yet, so... <laughs> You're not ready for the, uh, the yeah. retirement community yeah, the yet. Yeah, work. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm always going to be a skier. And that's what's so great about our sport, that I'm always going to be a skier. Like, I want to be that 60-year-old lady that can go back in the park and do a 360 and be like, the little kid's like, that lady's crazy. So, but. That would be awesome. Yeah. Um, what do you think of those big air people? Um, I've done some big airs yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I I understand it. It's not my favorite thing, but um, it's it's nice to put on a show too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I will admit that I didn't know much about slope style before we went. I'm with you. you. Yes. Um, not necessarily something I watch, but we've seen some video of Devin since in preparation of this. I got to say, I, I don't know how she does it. I'm frightened. As we know, I, I am very injury averse. And when she, we were talking about her skiing backwards, how do you ski backwards? And yet she does it and makes it look so beautiful and cool and amazing. Right. And it just seems like no big deal. So the, the going backwards, if you haven't watched any slope style, like they, they jump on rails, they, they jump off ramps and, and over like, well, they say the tables, so or mesa. It was a mesa jump. Okay. Anyway, but anyway, they have like uh, jumps that are there's an up ramp and kind of a down ramp, but there's separation in between. But what Devin does, and I'm sure many other competitors just do this, and it's perfectly normal for them, is they'll maybe do something off the rails and land backwards. And then they'll just stay backwards and go up one of these huge ramps and do another jump, flips and twists in the air and land it. No and then end up forwards. Yeah. Yeah. The next right. thing. Yeah. No biggie. <sighs> but in person, she was, and I hope it comes through, so fantastic to talk to. Oh, yeah. She was so much fun. And so much fun. And when you see her in interviews or when you see her on the in competition, she's so like that in person. Yeah. So she, I have to cheer for her because I just thought she right. was fantastic. And and because she's old, you know, twenty five. Yeah. She's old. Yeah. <laughs> she's. I won't cheer for her because she's not one of the short people, but she's one of the old people, so she'll fall into that category for me. Oh, that was crazy hearing her talk about how she felt so old in her sport. But I'm sure. And I'm. Yeah. 
and I'm old enough to be her mother. Right. Same here. So this someone else who talked about being old. Oh, yeah. Was that was great. We were, yeah, we're on Senior Citizen Day here at Olympic oh, Fever. God. <laughs> and that's Bradley Wilson, who is an old timer, I guess, in mogul skiing. So because all three of us are old, what do you think we talked about first? The pain. 